This is the Recognition Awards. Um, we have a few to look at here, so stand by for this. But first, we're going to take a look at the Women in Policing section. Have a look. OK, uh, Lucy, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, obviously, you've been nominated for a national award, um, so we're pleased to welcome you to our Lancashire Branch Council meeting, along with our national chair, uh, Steve Hartson, and Mom Sasha Hatchett, our Deputy Chief Constable. Uh, so I'll just read out some of the citation. Um, Lucy joined the Public Order Public Safety Team training in 2021 as a public order and method of entry trainer, taking responsibility for Lancashire's public order training level one, two and three. And this has involved the training and development of over a thousand officers. Uh, Lucy is the only female uh, full-time instructor and is naturally a role model for female officers across Lancashire. Uh, Lucy has also become a protester removal instructor and has played a key role in encouraging female officers into this area of policing. The support and development has been more than evident in the me method of entry disciplines that Lucy has introduced. Lucy's uh, developed a support package for female officers who still fail the course, which involves a three month development phase where they receive a strength and conditioning programme to support them. In a three-month intervening period, Lucy also coaches female officers in the correct techniques to maximise their chances of success. This is sometimes done in her own time, showing how dedicated she is to coaching and mentoring female officers. And this work has been recognised nationally, including at the most recent Heaper Sheep conference. Lucy is more than just a trainer. She is a coach, a mentor and a pivotal figure, not just in the training area, but across the force. She's a role model for female officers and is regularly deployed operationally at events such as football and will support operations across the county as a method of entry officer and a protester removal operative. Lucy has certainly broken down stereotypes and inspires others to have the confidence to follow in her path. Not only has the above work directly impact impacted female officers across the force, but it has also developed the way in which the force approaches method of entry in general. As such, the impact is force wide across all disciplines. All the work outlined above has undoubtedly made a difference to female officers, in particular has made her the MOE discipline for readily, more readily, readily available to all officers across the constabulary. Her work is innovative, groundbreaking and inclusive. So, well done, Lucy. Thanks very much, well thank you. Well done. Big congratulations to Lucy. Now we're going to hand over to Ben Hudson. Ben, of course, is the chair of the Police Federation National Detectives Forum, who will talk us through the investigator of the year. Ben. Thank you, Ian. I'm delighted this afternoon to be able to award the National PFNDF Detective of the Year Award to a very worthy winner. It was a privilege to be part of the award panel and uplifting to be able to read the amazing work our detective colleagues up and down the country are achieving. This year's winner was the hands down outstanding nomination. Laura Cause Cadden is a detective inspector from Thames Valley Police, managing the local Reading CID team. Laura is a committed, passionate, and highly skilled detective with experience across CID, PVP, and CT. The team at Reading are the strongest performing CID in the force, an exceptional achievement given that Reading is one of the largest policing areas in Thames Valley with a large, diverse population, including a university, a business community, a busy nighttime economy, and challenging and complex crime demands. The level of continued high performance is largely down to Laura's professionalism, leadership style, calm demeanor, and her professional credibility. Her team have complete confidence and faith in her ability to lead serious investigations to make effective decisions and to support them to being able to deliver the best to their, to their best of their abilities. This confidence extends to partners, stakeholders, peers and senior officers. Laura is a pleasure to work with, even in the most critical and demanding situations. Laura coaches her team uh, to the high standards she expects, but this also transfers to other staff that work under her command, particularly across Reading and when she's fulfilling the role as duty DI. This all translates into, into a highly uh, motivated and effective team 
who produce exceptional results to the, in the most serious crime and with positive interactions with the communities they serve. Laura is currently undertaking her PIP3 major crime SIOs course training, having been identified as a PIP3 SIO for the future. In addition to her day job, Laura is the local area's lead for, vulnerability, uh, for violence against women and girls and has been inspirational in, in setting up a proactive operation to try and identify uh, individuals displaying predatory behaviour towards vulnerable individuals during the nighttime economy. In addition to Laura's ability to deliver exceptional operational results, she has also been instrumental in developing and implementing the Thames Valley Crime Academy. Laura is passionate about identifying, nurturing and recruiting our future detectives and officers considering undertaking this pathway. In Laura, they could not have a better role model. Laura's all-round ability um, continues, to, continues to contribute to the exceptional performance, positive engagement with communities and leading and supporting her team to deliver um, and work with a highly motivated focus group in investigators. Her commitment and determination to identifying and enabling our future detectives demonstrates her outstanding ability and contribution to policing. I'm sure you'll agree, Laura is a very worthy winner of the National PFNDF Detective of the Year Award. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you. I was incredibly honoured to even be nominated, let alone to win. It's throughout my career being a detective has been a huge privilege. I wouldn't feel right without acknowledging my team. I have a phenomenal team of incredible individuals and I'm really proud of the values and the cultures and the work ethic that we've fostered. And we truly bring out the best in each other. I'm, I'm really, really proud of the recognition personally, but most importantly for my team and for the force. So thank you so much for the nomination and for the award. Thank you, I'm truly honored. Thank you, Laura, you're very welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations to Laura and thank you to Ben. Now we're going to hand over to Tiff Lynch, Deputy National Chair, who will talk us through the Rhodes Policing Officer of the Year. Tiff. Thank you, Ian. Good afternoon, conference. It's an honour to be reading this citation to you this afternoon. The winner of the National Roads Officer of the Year 2023 is Inspector Simon Hills from Thames Valley Police. Simon has been a police officer for 26 years and he currently leads the proactive operations and commercial vehicle unit team. He regularly goes above and beyond his remit to deliver an excellent road policing service. In particular, he put together Operation Tutledge. Operation Tutledge is now a nationwide operation linking policing and the motor insurance industry. Information of those in uninsured drivers is gathered using AMPR technology and recorded on the Midas database. A letter is then issued to the registered keeper, reminding them of the consequences of driving without insurance. 80% of those re recipients rectify their issues the remaining 20% are researched and then placed on the AMPR hot list. A substantial proportion of these are involved in other criminality. Operation Tutledge reduces demand on the frontline policing by allowing the majority of issues to be resolved outside of the criminal justice system. Furthermore, it provides intelligence allowing illegal drivers and criminals to be disrupted. This has an immense impact on police forces across the nation as the uptake has been considerable. Simon has faced the significant challenge of implementing this scheme against a backdrop of financial pressure and uncertainty. Roads policing was subject to significant cuts at the time of the introduction of this scheme and the operation allows members of the public to rectify their insurance outside of the criminal justice system and providing intelligence allowing uninsured drivers and criminals to be disrupted. Unfortunately, Simon couldn't join us today. However, we will be presenting him with his award at a local event next month. I want to thank Simon and give him the many congratulations on behalf of the Police Federation. Well done and thank you. Tiff, thank you very much indeed, and again, congratulations to Simon and our other winners there. Fabulous. Um, we're going to turn our attention now to uh, Medals for Heroes, something you might have heard uh, about over the 
course of, well, many years, in fact. Um, we're now going to welcome John Partington, National Board member, and Bryn Hughes, MBE, who's with us. Um, so tell us a bit about where this all started, Bryn. How did this all begin? Um, for, for me, it started 11 years ago when I lost my daughter. Um, and, I, and I've been looking at, for the last five or six years, some sort of official recognition um, from the state, if you like. Um, and then I was introduced to John um, and, and the, the Police Federation. So we, we've, we've sort of like come together to, to spearhead this campaign, if you like, and push it forward. Um, where is it at? What, what's the status? Because this is, uh, and shouldn't be, but is a, you know, clearly a journey. And you'd have thought this would be something that could be settled rather quickly. Anything yeah, but, I mean, it seems. We, we, we seem to be taking two steps forward and one step back, or pausing, if you like. Um, we, we've had numerous support from, from, from you know, dozens of MPs from cross-party support. Um, recently, we've had full support from the Welsh Government. We've had full support from the Labour Party. We've had um, sort of recognition and support from the Prime Minister in, in PMQs. And we just seem to be at this crossroads. We're not sure where we're going next. Uh, and John, there's a, a, two words that keep coming up uh, every time there's a conference, this one no exception, and that's the term no-brainer. Um, certain things in life you'd think, you know, this isn't, you, you don't have to be a rocket science to work out, here's a good idea, let's do it. It should be that simple, but the, the world is full of bureaucracy and politics. Yeah, I, th I think that's the problem. I don't think it's that people don't want to do it. I think it's the bureaucracy, um, particularly, I think, within the Cabinet Office. Um, I think there's probably some delays within the, in that department. Um, but like you said, I don't, Bryn and I, we've done what we call, I think, a roadshow around the country now. We've been meeting politicians, PCC, MPs. Um, Bryn just went down, like you said, to the Welsh Government, and no one's said, no, it's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, so we just need to see whether we can get it over the line. Because nobody would say, I mean, you'd have to be a particular odd kind of character, wouldn't you, to say it's not a good idea. You would think, <laughs> so, you would think so, yeah. Very strange response, that would be. Um, yeah. So everybody is in agreement, but there are still hurdles in the way, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, yeah, we, we've got to accept that, like, like John said, there is bureaucracy, and, and yeah. you know, we, we, we need it to be to be done properly and correctly. Um, but it just seems to be, where is that sticking point? Where, where are we at with that sticking point? What's holding it up? And I think if we knew that, if we could understand that, then you know, we could, we could, uh, we could probably see the light at the end of a tunnel. Indeed. Um, and what about the federation's part in all of this? You alluded to some of it there. Um, we got involved kind of by coincidence. Um, so I was doing a piece of work on behalf of the Federation around enhancing the co Office of Constable, more around the Long Service Medal, and then around the state awards, the MBEs, which Bryn has now been a recipient of. Thanks, Sean. He's not mentioned <laughs> it to people yet, but uh, I'm sure he will do. Um, and then the state gallantry awards, which a lot of people overlook, and people will, will know things like the, the George Medal, the George Cross. So I was doing a piece of work on that to see whether we could get some more recognition for feder federated members. And then just by chance, Bryn was doing a piece of work on getting something for officers who have died in service. And someone put us in contact with each other. And then um, we kind of ran from it from there. And we've been just trying to progress it now for over two years. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's how the Federation became involved in it. Is there a sense, Bryn, that it, 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 you're almost at that final point where this will get the green light? I think you, sometimes you think so. Sometimes yeah. you, you feel that you know the, the messages we're getting from various politicians and from the government, um, and then something seems to pause it and hold it up. So, yes. uh, like we say, we're, 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 we're rushing forward. We're getting really ahead of ourselves, if you like, and then we're we're having to find out what's 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 a bottleneck, what's holding it up. And John, I mean, this is about medals for heroes, but actually, it's wider than that. I mean, talk us through what other recognition awards you're looking at as well. Like I just said, Britain's agreed to help us work on the next, obviously it's multifaceted, the piece of work that we're doing. Obviously this is the, the main piece of it because when you lose a loved one, you want that formal state recognition. But there's also many acts of bravery that go on up and down the country every single day. We have our National Bravery Awards every year where we've got nearly 50 um, very, very brave, heroic acts uh, that take place. Um, but what often's missed, and Bryn and I discussed this at the beginning, we were, were wondering, well, why didn't Fiona and Nicola get some kind of state gallantry recognition? Because it's posthumous as well. Yeah. And, and that didn't come. And we, we wondered, was that down to an educational problem with, with chiefs not submitting them? Uh, was it down to the quality of an application? It went in, but we didn't really know. And it was very difficult to get answers on that. And we were looking to progress that um, for Nicola and Fiona, but we decided not to and to go down this route instead which is a very fitting award. Although, 
we both think that they should have been eligible for a state gallantry award. So the next piece of work is to enhance that piece of work, to get more people up and down the country speaking to chief constables saying, this brave piece of work happened, we need to get this submitted straight away. Uh, so that was one area that the Police Federation were doing. And obviously the state gallantry awards as well was, was another one. But if we can now progress to the mm. gallantry awards and get some of our brave officers recognised, that would be great as well. Because there are, the, 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 there's already some recognition, as you say, for officers that have fallen in the line of duty or officers that have you know, carried out incredible acts of bravery. But this is, these are very specific points, aren't they? These are, these are very specific awards, awards that, from the state. That, that are relevant to exactly what you were just discussing there. Yeah, these are very relevant. What normally happens is people get like a chief constable's commendation. Yep. which is fine if it's suitable. But I think there's, all, there's that lack of knowledge to say, actually, there are further awards that you can push for. You have to put, submit the applications and go through the, the, the right networks at government. But that should be happening on a more frequent basis. Yeah. Just a final point, Bryn. Uh, if we talk to you at next year's conference, um, are, you, are you hopeful? I, I think you may be holding one uh, of Yeah, I think things. there'll be something wrong if there isn't uh, by yeah. this time next year. We, it, you know, um, the National Chair said last year at the conference, you know, hopefully at next year's conference which was this year we should yeah. have that so um and and just how much that would mean to families like myself is yeah you, you know it's just immense we, we have the home secretary speech of course um in just a couple of hours who knows whether there'll be something about it in there but i i know that there's you know nobody's putting any bets on on that one so we will wait and see um John, good to see you as always. Thank uh, you. And Bryn, thank you, sir, for coming thank you. down. Thank, MBE, I should say, at the end. Just, <laughs> oh, for, just yeah, to get it in. John, John would let you know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John was a knight of the realm, I thought, until today. <laughs> good to see you both. Thank you.